You know, when when Pastor said last week, he said, uh, "Hey, David, Joseph, we're gonna mix it up. You gonna preach in New Caney, Joseph, you gonna preach in Crosby." And I was like, "Right, cool. Whatever. It's been a while since I preached over there. It'd be fun." He said, uh, "Yeah, but David, by the way, Joseph, baby, do like you know, right around that time." So I said, "So I'll be preaching both." And Joseph goes, "I don't know, man. We'll we'll just see." I said, "Okay." So I talked to him yesterday in, in, uh, in the evening. He was like, man, he's like, I don't know. Things are kind of progressing. We'll see. I was like, all right, we're going to be doing this in the morning. So uh, uh, I'm excited to be here. Joseph was going to be here again. Be praying for him and his wife. I don't know the current situation. Uh, maybe. Yeah, she's pregnant. She's still. She's pregnant. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We're waiting on the unpregnant part. I don't. I hadn't heard anything. So uh, no uh, close. No, no babies yet. Just close. So that's a good thing. Again, we're just gonna pray that that happens quickly and that uh, baby Isabel comes out as healthy as healthy can be. Because uh, that is an incredible thing to see a baby born. It is an incredible thing to see a baby born. It blew my mind the first time. I'll tell you. It. it it was a little unnerving, especially as a daddy that's never been around any of that. I never changed a diaper before my kids, okay? So I, being around that, I was going, <laughs> nurses, doctors, everybody, I'm going, <laughs> all right, listen, I'm going to go with whatever you tell me because I don't know, okay? <laughs> I know they, uh, my wife made me watch this little thing. It was like what to expect when expecting. I watched it. I still didn't get it. So it was, uh, I, I found out real quick that if you just go and you begin to experience it, you're going to learn right now. So, uh, I, huh? OJT? Yeah, yeah, 100%. It was on the job. I don't know how much training I got, but I was on the job. So, uh, man, this morning, I was talking to uh, a few people, and when Pastor asked me to do this, it was like immediately the Holy Spirit began to give me a thought or a title, and I was like, okay, God, but, you know, where do I go from there? Okay, it's, and it just like literally, and I don't know if it was just the, the Christmas music playing in the background or it was, but I just kept coming up with this, the best time of the year, the best time of the year. And I know there's tons of Christmas songs about the best time of the year. This is the best time. This is Holly Jolly, as my daughter loves that, Holly Jolly Christmas. She's still begging me for the CD. If anybody sees a Holly Jolly Christmas CD, my God. Uh, but uh, so... And it just kept coming up and coming up and coming up. And I was like, you know what, God? All right, what, what are, where are you leading me? That's cute, the best time of the year. And yeah, we love Christmas, right? Most folks are going to go into the Christmas season excited, happy. Oh, yay, Christmas, right? You got kids? It's hard not to be like, oh, yay, Christmas. I don't know how much oh, yay, Christmas is there or is uh, oh, okay, Christmas, because it, like it or not, it's going to be talked about. I can promise you I have now heard, uh, Daddy, I want a walkie-talkie um, at least 400 times. My son Joshua has been absolutely stuck on walkie-talkies. And I keep, to, I, I keep telling him, son, somebody's going to get it for you, but you have to be quiet. You have to quit asking for it. Otherwise, I'm going to tell him, take it back. It's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> we didn't even make it three minutes down the road and he's already talking about and so he's so excited about what he's going to get that he's missing out on the right now he's missing out on the fact that he's with his daddy and his mommy right now he's missing out on the fact that even though he's got walkie-talkie on the brain that there's life happening in front of him and so I want to talk to you guys today about the best time of the year. And to me, the best time of the year is whatever time I'm in. It's whatever time I'm currently, presently in. Because this is the opportunity that God has given me right now. And it's very easy to get caught up in the franticness, the commercialization, all the nonsense that goes on with. And there's good in it, too. Don't get me wrong. Christmas parties are good. Like, that, that stuff's good. It's good to be able to fellowship, and it's good to be able to have something to look forward to. And I don't want to say, oh, don't do that, because obviously, like heaven, otherwise, what is heaven good for, right? We're looking forward to it. But the problem is, if I'm constantly looking forward to heaven, 
then I'm missing out on the things that God has given me right now. And so what I was started to think about is with my son talking about walkie-talkies, walkie-talkies, walkie-talkies. I was thinking, man, what do I love about Christmas? Well, one of the things that I love about Christmas, and I would say probably 90% of people, if you surveyed them, say, what do you love about Christmas? Well, I love the fact that I'm going to be around family and friends, right? Like, like most folks, when we get to be a certain age, it's not about the gifts. Like anymore, don't get me wrong, a gift is nice and it's good. But the truth is, like, you get to an age, and like I was thinking this year, like, honest to God, like if, if, I, if my wife asked me, and she did yesterday, she's like, well, David, what do you want for Christmas? And I'm looking at her, I'm going, uh, uh, like, and I told her, honestly, did peace. I just want to be able to hang out with my family. I just want to be able to have dinner, have it good, have my kids not screaming at me, yelling at walkie-talkies. Like, like that would be a absolutely great, fantastic Christmas. And I guarantee you, if you ask most folks in here, that would be like number one, right? Just be able to have peace, be able to spend time with fans and fam friends and family. And I begin to think about that. And here's the thing is I went up to Oklahoma uh, for Thanksgiving. And when I went up to Oklahoma, two days before I went there, I had a very good friend of mine. He's a pastor in Edmond, Oklahoma. And uh, we were going to see him. We we're going to go hang out at his church. And um, he said, he calls me. And he called me. It was uh, like a weird time. And so I was like, that's kind of weird. You know, it's not, he's not Lloyd Kim. He has the kind of set schedule. So normally I know about, about when he's going to call me. And he calls me and he says, uh, and he's just crying. And I'm like, okay. And so I just sit. I don't say much. Like, okay, I guess whenever you're ready, I'm ready. And so I'm just sitting there, and he's like, bro, my mom passed. And in that moment, I was like, dang. You know, he's my age, 39 years old. He's like, he's like man, my mom passed. You know, like, I, I don't even know what to say. I said, well, Josh, there's not a lot to say. I said, look, dude, this is, this is one of those things. Like, this is literally when you need that faith, when you need that understanding, the peace that passes all understanding, right? Like, we can try to wrap our brains around death and around some of that, but the truth is, we can't. There's no way for our human minds to be able to, and it's finicey, we can't be able to wrap our brains around death because it's infinite until we meet again. And so, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, you know, what would it be like if I lost my parents or, you know, my loved ones or even even more than than loss is like, what if, you know, anything could happen, guys. Anything literally at any time, like we think about things and we're like, oh, you know, I w me and Pastor Wynn did a funeral on uh, on uh, I think it was Thursday. Um, and And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to the family talk to him and I'm just like, man. Like, they're not going to see their mom again. They're not going to see their mom again. She'd been four years in hospice, but still, she, they're not going to see their mom again on this side. On this side. And so I, I'm sitting there and I realize, you know what, man, it's so easy to get caught up in the, I can't wait till tomorrow and I can't wait till Christmas because I'm going to see my family. But here's what I begin to realize. I see my family right now. When I look out at this church, I see my family right now. Like the, the people that I love in this world, like I, I look out of this church and I see people that I love right now. And I think, why would I wait till Christmas to be able to express to them that I love them? Why would I want to wait until tomorrow to express to them that I love them? Okay, I'm going to give gifts on Christmas. And yes, my kids will feel like, oh, I'm loved, right? Because that's how kids apparently feel loved. <laughs> through gift giving <laughs> all that other stuff is cool but apparently the only way to show kids love is i gotta buy you something but uh as i as i begin to think about it i thought why would i wait one more day why would i put off till tomorrow the very things that are sitting in front of me right now and i thought man you know what that's where i'm gonna go with this so i want to read a verse to you guys <laughs> it's in Revelations 1, 8. And this isn't on the overhead. <laughs> Cheryl's looking at me like, bro, you gave me the overhead. Like, don't mess with me. Listen, this is not on the overhead, and it's okay. I just want you guys to listen to this. It says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, 
the Almighty, who is, is first. Do you catch that? Who is. He's the God of right now. So many times we get caught up in the fact that God is, oh, yeah, hey, listen, when my boat comes in, my ship comes in, it's always when. And if we're not careful, our win is always in front of us. But the truth is our now is right here. My win is based in my now. And if I'm not careful, I'll never see my win because I'm not even living in my now. There's a couple things that happen in life, and we can, we can look at our lives, and we can look in the past, and we can be stuck in the past. If we're not careful this Christmas, we'll think about all the Christmases that we had with loved ones past and miss out on loved ones here. They're right in front of you. The ones that have passed, I can't do anything about. I can't tell them I love them again until I get to the other side. I can't give them a gift until I get to the other side. But the ones that are in front of me right now, I have an opportunity to be able to bless their lives. I have an b- opportunity to be able to enhance their lives. They have an opportunity to enhance mine. And so don't get so caught up in looking into your yesterday that you're missing your today. Oh. Don't get so caught up in looking into your tomorrow that you're missing out on your day. Oh. Again, if I'm so caught up in my tomorrow, then it'll never come because I'm not living in my day today, which determines my tomorrow. And so I thought about this and I thought the two greatest gifts ever given. What were the two greatest gifts ever given? First and foremost was Jesus Christ. He was the greatest gift ever given. God gave his one and only son. He gave. Okay, so if God gave his son, and then it says he was wrapped in flesh, right? First John said the word was God, and that God was with us, and it was wrapped in flesh. Why do we wrap our presents? Because God was wrapped first, right? Jesus Christ literally came as a present to the entire world for all time. So that we could celebrate Christmas. No. So that we could have life and life more abundant. We don't even know when Christmas was. We like to say it's in December. And honestly, if you look, it was probably in the springtime. That's just a theological thought that happens pretty much unanimously. They realized that at the time that Jesus was born, with the way the stars were lined up, blah, blah, blah. It was probably in the springtime. Guess what? That doesn't matter nothing to me. I'm going to still celebrate December 25th. Why? Because that's when the world does it. And if that's what it takes for me to acknowledge the fact that Jesus Christ was willing to step out of heaven, then that's the day that I'm going to do it. But don't let me to get so caught up in celebrating it only on this day that I miss the fact that I can celebrate that today. I can celebrate my king coming to the earth every single day. I don't have to wait till Christmas to be able to buy a bunch of presents, to be able to put up a tree so that I can say I love my God. Just saying. So God wrapped himself in flesh. Peace comes not from the absence of trouble, but from the presence of God. If I want peace in my life, It's not about not having trouble around me, because guess what? It's always going to be there, okay? There's (laughs) one constant thing in life is there's always going to be trouble. I mean, you can have a really good life, there's going to be trouble. Something is going to happen, and it's going to cause you trouble. Now, some folks may feel like their troubles are bigger than other folks, but it's real easy to view that from your perspective, from your point of view. Well, they got an easy life. Well, you don't know that because according to them, it may be giant. According to where they're at, it's like me and my wife were talking about. I was like, she's like, oh, well, this person has it easy. And I said, well, baby, listen to this. I said, it's always about perspective. I said, what you may find easy in your life, they may find difficult. But what you may find difficult, they may find easy. So it's never about easy or hard. It's just about this is what I got to deal with. This is what I got to overcome to fulfill my destiny. 
So we run to this, and I say, okay. So the greatest gifts, my king, he came down to earth. Second, I want, I want to talk about this, is another quote I got. And I, I love this one. It says, we cannot attain the presence of God. You cannot do enough to attain the presence of God. You can't be enough. You can't think enough. You can't. Why? Because the presence of God is always around you. It is all you are always, no matter what you are doing. I do not care what it, think about something you're doing. Guess what? You're in the presence of God because there's nowhere you could go that you could not be in the presence of God. There is nowhere on this planet that I could go. There's nothing I could be doing where the presence of God is not there next to me. That's even crazier. I could be in the midst of the worst thing I've ever done in my life. And guess what? God is still more real at that moment than he's ever been in my entire life. The only thing that's lacking there is my awareness of him. That's the only thing that separates me from understanding that I'm in the very presence of God, that I don't have to come to church on Sunday in order to experience the presence of God. When I wake up, I'm in the presence of God. When I go to sleep, I'm in the presence of God. When I'm brushing my teeth, I'm in the presence of God. When I'm working, I'm in the presence of God. No matter what I'm doing, I'm in the presence of God. Matthew 1.23 says this, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. And he shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is literally being interpreted as God with us. God stepped out of heaven, came down to earth. Why? Because he wanted to reconcile all of mankind to the understanding that in the garden we used to walk side by side with God. Then the separation happened. And now there was a bunch of people for a long span of time that did not get to experience walking hand in hand with God, simply because Eve and Adam decided to make a, a bobo, right? And so now we come back to the Christmas story. God is saying, okay, now it's time for me to walk hand in hand with my creation again. Now it's time for me to send the perfect Jesus into an imperfect earth so that I can once again walk with my kids. I can once again grab my children and say, let's go. We're on a mission. We're about my father's business. Jesus came to restore what was so good in the garden that they missed. They thought, well, if I could just be more like God, then I could somehow experience more God. And the truth was they could not experience any more of God because he, they were literally in the presence of him. There was nothing else they could do, and yet they were tricked into believing that somehow they could experience more of God, be more like God so that they could have more understanding of God. And God was saying, no, there's never going to be a full understanding of who I am because there is an infinite amount, an unlimited amount who I am. You could never fully understand. And so, God no longer wanted to watch from a distance. He didn't want to be this distant God. He didn't want to be a God that was sitting up in heaven and saying, okay, guys, let's go. You can do it. Let's go. Come on. Come on. He wanted to be a God that was walking hand in hand with us. He wanted to be a God that was moving along with us. Presence always brings salvation. When you begin to experience and when you begin to sit in the very presence of God, it's what brings salvation into your life. When you begin to become aware of the fact that God is our ever-present help in time of need, right? But God wants to move from our ever-present help in time of need into our ever-present. He doesn't just want to have to be there when you're in need. He wants to just be there. How good would it be as a daddy to say, hey, listen, every time you need me, you call me. But that's the only time I want to be around you. That doesn't make sense. That's not a loving God. That's not a God that's like, hey, I just want to spend time with you. No, that sounds like, well, if you need me, call me. No, nah, God graduated from that, sent Jesus into the earth so that he didn't have to just be our ever present help in time of need. Instead, he moved into, I just want to be next to you. I just want to be able to hang out with you. 
He literally wanted to walk out what he told Abraham. I want to be your friend. I want to be more than just daddy at a distance. I want to be your friend. I want to walk hand in hand with you. I want to move you through your life. Second Corinthians 6, 2 simply says this, for he says at the acceptable time, I listened to you and on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Don't wait. Listen, I don't know everyone's place in here and I don't know where you sit with Christ, but I do know that there is never a better time to find and experience the salvation of Jesus Christ than right now. Come on. Whatever day it is, whatever time it is, at its, what time we got? 925. Come on. Now's the time. Amen. Now's the best time I could ever experience to have Jesus Christ be my Savior. To acknowledge the fact, how do I become saved? Listen, you become saved simply because you say, I need help. And then you walk it out. It's not enough to just say, okay, Jesus. We're not full Baptists here. We're not just saying, okay, Jesus, need your help. Thank you. Now I'll talk to you in another 15 years. It ain't like that because I can tell you, listen, God is our ever-present help in time of need. But listen, what would it be like if you were drowning and another man came up to you and said, man, you okay? No, man, I'm, I'm really struggling. Okay, I'll go get help. All of a sudden, you're going to be like, hey, bro, <laughs> like, hey, uh, I'm treading water right now. Like, I really need some help right now. God is in present. He is our king right now. Don't wait. If you need salvation, listen, I don't care what it takes. It's worth it to do whatever it takes to get there. If you need to come talk to me after the service, any one of these gentlemen in here, whatever it takes, listen, do that thing because now is the time of salvation. The second greatest gift we've ever been given is the present, the right now. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift of God, which is why we call it the present. The present. Yesterday I was walking. I'm listening, I'm, I'm, I'm about my father's business. <laughs> Me and my wife are trying to get some shopping done. We got the kids. That's always an uh, interesting uh, <laughs> feat in and of itself. So we're going, we're going. Okay, and I'm walking with the, with the kids, right? I'm, I'm, I'm dragging the kids. I'm like, come on, we got to get in this store. We got to get in this store. And there's 5 million people everywhere. And I'm like, come on, come on. The car's driving everywhere. And what does my son and I do? Uh, he's he going to be Naya, okay? He's going to stop. He's like, he see a flower. He's like, oh. Stick his face all up in it, and I'm like, bro, come on, let's go. And in that moment, Holy Spirit grabbed me. He's like, bro, this is exactly what I'm telling you. The problem with life is that you get so busy, focused on the things that you think need to be done, that you're missing out on the right now. Naya's just taking advantage of the right now. He saw a beautiful flower. He wanted to smell the flower. You walked right past the flower, didn't even see him. And I'm like, my bad. Enjoy, son. I got five minutes. <laughs> Go ahead. He's sitting there, and I mean, so then he goes from smelling one flower, he goes to smell the next flower, the next flower. All right, Holy Spirit, you stretching me right now. I was good with the one flower. Now let's go. So listen, if we're not careful, man, we stop, and we just fail to stop and smell the flower. Smell the roses. they right there. Even in the monks of the thorns, in the nonsense of life, there's still beauty in it. There's still beauty in it. And it's called life. Guess what? Sometimes there's stinky stuff in it. Sometimes there's sharp, painful stuff in it. But man, when that flower blooms, yes, Lord, it was worth every minute of it. Exodus 3, 7, 1 through 15. And it's a kind of a long reading, but I just want to read it as quickly as I can with understanding. It says, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. 
and have heard their cries because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, God talking to Moses, so I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and bring them up from the land to a good and large land to a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, there's a lot more to be said in this verse, but when I begin to read that, I begin to realize one thing. God is the deliverer of right now. He said, I came to deliver my people. He didn't say, I came and I'm hoping to deliver my people in 45 years. He came to Moses so that Moses would deliver the people that day, in that moment. The problem was, Moses and his inadequacies, he said, well, God, I don't speak very good. And well, God, I don't. And he began to use excuses and excuses and excuses. And because of Moses' inadequacies and his lack of faith in the one that was in the bush that was not burning, instead, he goes, well, man, I don't know. Uh, God, uh, yeah, like, why don't you send my brother? He can talk for me. Why don't you... Uh, man, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening. Well, you know that Pharaoh, you know, he's pretty hard-hearted. He don't really want to listen. Uh, 40 years later, 50 years later, all of a sudden, they're finally walking out the very freedom that God had determined to Moses in the bush. In that moment, God was saying, I am the deliverer. That never changed in that 40 years. Every single day that they were walking around in the desert, God was still the same deliverer that he meant to be on that first day. It just took them 40 years to figure it out. It took 40 years for Moses to get out of the way and say, okay, well, really, God killed him, but then another story. <laughs> You're just not learning, Moses. Let me get you out of the way real quick. Why? And it says, so I'm going to skip down. I'm going to go all the way down to, let's go, verse, uh, I don't know, I, I, my, my verses ain't in here, so we'll skip down to, let's go 10, 11, 12. I hope you guys are reading this as you go, this is getting, getting the story. I just want to make sure you guys are getting your Bible reading in this week. 13. All right, here we go. It says, Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Again, he's saying, Hey, when these people ask me who you've been, what do you want me to tell them? And he said, Go ahead, 14. He said, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. I am currently, presently, will never change who I am. I am never changes from the past to the present to the future. It is always right now. I am and I am and I am and I am. Come on. He said to the people, he said to the children of Israel, I am who sent me to you. The I am is the one that sent me to deliver you. We fast forward a couple millennia. We come to Christ. Christ Jesus, he gets born. He becomes the savior of the world. Mary, the mother of Jesus, looking at Jesus, he said, man, this is the Christ child. This is the one who the angels told me he was going to be. She's looking at Jesus and she realizes, do you guys realize something? Like, it has to hit me at times when I'm reading the Bible, like how crazy some things are. Jesus Christ was what? He was fully God. 100% God. He was 100% man. Mary, she's like, you know, 12, Jesus being 12, they're on their way, they're marching. They go up, they take the survey. Jesus decides, I want to go kick it in the temple. 
I'm going to go hang out with some priests real quick, Mom, Dad. I know y'all might be gone for a little bit. Mary comes back. They finally work it out like, oh, man, Jesus ain't up into all these people. Let me go back, find Jesus. Jesus sitting there looks at Mary. She says, why did you do that? He said, because you know I have to be about my father's, what, business. My biz is this. I am right now that which God called me to be at 30. He was already everything he needed to be to start his ministry. He didn't need anything more at that moment right then. He already had all the scribes, all the pharaohs, all the people at that time, not the pharaohs, but all the, the minds of Christ at that time. The religious leaders were already in awe of this 12-year-old. They were already learning the very things of God from a 12-year-old. And they're going, who is this kid? And Mary comes in. She's like, bro, where you been? Why are you not here with me and your daddy? Mom, don't you know I have to be about my daddy's business? Okay. And what did it say? It said that Mary began to think about this in her heart. She pondered it in her heart. Fast forward. All right. Now we're running ahead. He's 30 years old. Jesus, sitting there with his disciples in John 2, 1, simply says this. On the third day, there was a wedding in Canaan. And the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. My hour has not come. Listen. This isn't just Jesus telling Mary, your hour hasn't come. This is the very God of heaven, the very God of the universe is telling her, listen, woman, two things. I'm not a respecter of persons. I don't know who the wedding groom is, but I can tell you, I don't care. That's what he was literally telling her. Listen, what does that concern me? This is his wedding. My wedding's coming. And it's going to be a glorious one, right? And so when he looks at his mom, he's like, what does that have to do with me? My hour ain't come. God himself is looking at the mother of Jesus and telling her, it ain't my time. God doesn't respect time. He doesn't even live in time. Why would he respect time? What is he really telling her? Does your faith match what you're about to ask me? Why? Because faith is, it is currently, it is present, it is always right now. It can't be in the future and it can't be in the past. It is always right now. Come on, preacher. So when he's looking at Mary, he said, what does that have to do with me? And she says, whatever he tells you, just do that thing. If they would have told him to stack elephants, I mean, those people, are, uh, all right, uh, I guess we're going to figure out how to stack some elephants. All he said was put the water in the, I'm going to show you right now. Fill the pots up. Fill the pots up. That's an easy thing to do. But it took the fact that Mary did not care about God saying to her, hey, it ain't my time. Okay, hey, you remember that time when you said you about to be about your father's business? You about to be about your father's business today. That starts right now. Because Think about this. I was reading this story and I began to just blow my mind. Jesus is standing there with his disciples. Jesus hasn't done one miracle yet. And yet there's 12 men following him around like he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Why? Because my miracles should always go after my belief system. I have to believe that he can before I can see that he will. I was looking and I'm reading this and I'm going, my God, he already had disciples. This dude ain't done one thing as far as miracles. We don't see him preaching. We don't see nothing. All we see is Jesus walking around and be like, hey, you want to come with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let me, let me get rid of my business real quick. Let me get rid of my business. Let me quit collecting taxes. Let me 
give up on the thing that was making me money until this point and let me just walk around with you for the next three years. They hadn't seen a single manifestation of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy One, of the one that was in and that was always be. And yet they said, yeah, absolutely. I'll throw my nets down. I'll give up my business. How hard would it be for Americans to say, oh, yeah, I'll give up my job at the plant today. You want me to just walk around with you? Oh, yeah, 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 sure, man, let's go. Where are we going? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Literally, that's what was happening. And they were like, dude, where else could I go? Why could I not follow you? Because my miracle is waiting for my faith to catch up. Guess what? My miracle isn't have to come tomorrow. He's not the God of tomorrow. He's the God of right now. Guess what? He's a miracle working God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Because every single day when I wake up and my mercies are new, guess what? My opportunities are new too. My opportunities to get saved, my opportunities to find a miracle, my opportunities to be healed, my opportunities to experience God in a new way. Simply came because I woke up this morning and I had my present. Treat every day like it's a present. I promise you, your miracle won't come tomorrow. It'll come right now. We could begin to see miracles when we're at work. We could begin to see miracles when I'm driving my kids down the street. Maybe they won't talk to me for five minutes. Miracle. <laughs> you guys laugh, but that's because you ain't never been in my car. It's unending. It's unnerving. <laughs> I just want you guys to understand that in this season, don't wait for Christmas. Right now is the greatest time that you've ever been alive. Right now is the greatest moment of your life. I don't care if you're on the down side of life. Guess what? Right now, I, I, was, I was nice. I said the downside. I didn't go there, okay? <laughs> All I know is I could be on the downside of life, ain't you? Because my tomorrow is not promised to me and if we keep living like my tomorrow's promised me I'm going to keep living as if I'm going to oh, I'll just do it tomorrow my life will become procrastination simply because I forgot that the God of right now is alive in my life that I can experience something that I've never experienced simply because I'm alive today I'm so grateful for the gift of God that he said, listen, you don't have to wait. You do not have to wait. You don't have to wait for your miracles. You don't have to wait for anything. If you want it, you believe it, it's yours. Why? Because he said, my promises are yes and amen. That's not tomorrow. There's yes, it's already yes. The problem is we just got to wrap our minds around the fact that he's already given it to us. We just haven't worked out inside of ourselves that it's already mine. Instead, I'm going, man, God, if you'd like to, man, I, I, oh, man, I don't like this job, and I wish I had, and I wish I had, and it's always tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Or, man, God, I wish, I don't know why you took them. And that's not to to diss on anybody that's passed before us. I want to lift them up and honor them. Why? Because even God himself, when he was saying, who do I sin? He said, do you tell him the God of Jacob and the God of Isaac and the God of Abraham. You tell them that I am that I am. Why? Because God is always looking to establish that which came before us. He wants to honor that which came before us, but at the same time, not so looking at what came before us that I'm not walking out my destiny right now. So in this moment, I normally won't do this, but I felt really strong this morning. At this moment, if you say, you know what, Pastor, I, I've just been, I have been living in my yesterday, or I have been living in my tomorrow, and I just want to wake up and smell the roses. Man, I'm not even going to ask you to bow your head. I'm not going to ask you to do anything. I'm simply just going to pray. But I want you guys to understand that the greatest gift of your life is right now. 
It is the fact that we opened our eyes this morning. It is the fact that we get to experience the presence of the Almighty God right now. Lord, I love you and I thank you. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for the fact that you are the God of now. You are the God of now. That I don't have to wait any longer. I can experience your salvation right now. I just say to anybody in here that's saying, I need Jesus. In Jesus' name, be with them. Let their eyes to be open to the fact that they needed you and their lives to be forever changed, that they would walk it out from this point forward. My past is redeemed. I can't go there anymore. I can't change anything. My future is undetermined. I don't even know if I have one. So I'm going to live in my now. Let us to be excited about the seasons that are coming, but also to live right now in such a way that I would bring those seasons into my now so that I don't miss out on anything that you would have for me. I love you this morning. I'm so grateful for the fact that Jesus Christ was willing to be that perfect sacrifice so that I could have life currently and life more abundant currently. It doesn't have to be a future thing. That's not a future word. That is a right now word. And so I just take that and I say yes to it right now. That's the one I want right now. That's the miracle I want right now. That is the gift that I want. And I celebrate it this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. This morning, I want you guys to have the opportunity to be able to give. And I say opportunity because it is an opportunity. It's a gift that we would even be able to do that. I promise you it's a gift. So this morning, if you uh, collect in the buckets, have you guys come up. I'm going to put a throat lozenger in. I'm sorry, but my voice is killing me, and i got to go do this again. So... We are exceedingly grateful for the gift and the giver in this house. We understand that we can't do what we do without you. We love you guys. Pastor loves you guys. I'm going to tell you, I know you don't always get to be in the office with him, but I do, at least when I'm in the office. He loves you guys. You're his purpose. You're the reason when he wakes up, he smiles. This church right here is his life and that's not a bad thing that's a good thing he loves you guys and so for him not to be here and to trust me with this pastor I love you I don't know if you're even going to see this but I don't care because I still love you I'm excited about what God is doing in this season again look for opportunities to be able to give look for opportunities to be able to sow into somebody's life because you don't know what that will give for him you don't know what that'll do for him. It could forever change, not just one life. Listen, when you change a life, you change lives. Because every life that that life is connected to begins to change. You change my life, you change my family's life. You change JJ's life, you change my life. It's amazing how, because of connection, that the kingdom of heaven spreads. It goes quickly. I'm grateful for you guys. So this morning, if you guys need a tither offering envelope, they're right in front of you. You guys can go ahead and start filling those out. I'm so grateful for you guys. You guys can go ahead. I, I, I'm sure you guys are already doing it. Uh, if you don't have it worked out by now, I meet them in the back. They'll be there. It is a gift for us. And uh, we're going to say jobs and better jobs, more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. I am grateful for this. Why? Because, again, if he's the God of the now, that's all possible right now. When I sow into that, I can reap from that. 
There is a seed time and harvest, but that time could be now. I could be putting into play and receiving back. Now, that's again, it's not always finances. I love what one of the great steel men of America said. He said, I may not ever darken the door of a church. He said, but I believe in tithing. He was one of the richest men of all time. He said, but I believe in tithing because I've seen it work in my life. I don't necessarily go to church, but that tithing bit, it works. If Carnegie could do it, I could do it. Well, he could do it a little better than I could, but that's because he had a little more money. But it worked for him. I don't care if you got a widow's might. It worked for her, and it's going to work for you. December 11th, Swap, Seniors with a Purpose, Bible Study. Today, uh, it is going on. We're still there. We're still going. God, maybe or not. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. I wanted to like, yeah, mama's on it. She's got it. That's what I'm talking about. Today, Swap, after service, go hang out with them. December 14th through the 17th, 21st, Forge Youth Ministry. Uh, every